Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm finishing up this big steel project here, and I'm using Pulse Spray MIG with 9010, 90 argon, 10 CO2, mixed gas, and I'm about to run out of that, and I got about enough for one more part, which is all I have left, but I need to conserve it. So I, the reason I'm using Pulse Spray, it's a version of spray transfer. It's much more manageable than full-out spray. But I don't need it for this one end, so I'm going to switch over, I'm going to switch gears here and use straight CO2 gas because this end uh, is a bunch of welding and it's nothing but counterweights. So it's a bunch of big three quarter inch plates welded on the end. They don't do anything but serve as a counterweight and so I feel pretty fine about using straight CO2 gas on those. And it gives us something to talk about. So I'm getting, a, getting the end plates tacked up here. And again, because they are nothing but counterweights, there's no precision involved. They don't do anything other than serve as a weight. So I'm kind of eyeballing them a little bit. And I don't know why they're designed to go like they are, but that's the way they're supposed to fit on there. So I'm going to be welding with straight CO2 gas. In order to do that, you need a CGA adapter to fit most regulators. And also it uses this little nylon washer in there. Washer is very important to get a good seal as well as to keep the regulator and adapter from frosting up. So I'm putting it on the CO2 tank here, and once I get the CGA adapter on there, I can pretty much use any regulator that I would use for MIG or TIG. Now a while back I did a little CO2 welding with this Ironman uh, 230 with straight CO2 gas, and it does not have an inductance setting on it. It's fixed inductance, and it welded okay, but oftentimes when you don't have an inductance setting using straight CO2, it just doesn't look that good. Now here's 7525, same machine, much smoother arc and everything. But I'm using today a Lincoln Power MIG 350 MP, and it does have an inductance setting. And it's also got a synergic setting specifically designed for CO2 welding, and also some recommendations for voltage and, and, and wire feed speed, but they didn't work too great, so I adjusted them a little bit. So I'm using a negative 7.3, which is really high inductance. The negative numbers are high inductance on this machine. And uh, 274 inches a minute, 22.6 voltage. And I hadn't quite got it dialed in just right yet, but it's getting pretty close. It's got a fairly smooth arc, but it's slightly erratic. And that's what I find with welding with CO2 gas is the sweet spot is a lot harder to find. It's a lot tighter sweet spot than it is if you're using a 7525, also called C25 gas mix. But if you just want something to stick together and get good penetration, CO2 is a good choice. It's just going to spatter just a little bit more than 7525. Not crazy. Not a lot. You're not going to have spatter all over everything, but you're going to have more spatter inside the nozzle and more spatter on the workpiece. And if you can knock it off with a big heavy wire brush, that's okay. Also, CO2 is more sensitive to wire stick out. See right here, I've got a long stick out. It's erratic. I shorten the stick out. It gets much better. So talking about spatter, here's an alternative to anti-spatter spray for your nozzle. Just regular old PAM works good for me. Now, I'm not saying you can use this on code work and all that because, you know, it, I'm just saying it works. So, but if you're going to spray it up in there, you want to you want to burn a little bit of the excess off before you get started. Another option is Vaseline for, you know, anything you can put on a baby's butt is pretty friendly to the environment and to your lungs and everything like that so I feel pretty good about using Vaseline for nozzle dip again just burn it off a little bit before you get started on your work now here's a CO2 weld not pretty a little bit of extra spatter one reason for using the CO2 would be 115 volt MIG welders and portability this is a Hobart 210 MVP they actually make a little kit like this you can get them. You can get these paintball cylinders filled at any Dick's Sporting Goods. Try doing that on a Sunday afternoon at a welding supply. So that's one reason to use CO2 is just portability. You don't have a lot invested in a in a full size cylinder, so you can anybody can get a hold of a paintball cylinder for pretty cheap. You get one of these little adapters and hook it up to any 115 volt MIG welder, and now you got gas shielded MIG welding anywhere you go. So hey, thanks for watching, and just as a reminder, one of the ways I support this video habit of mine is selling DVDs of all the YouTube videos I did in previous years. So go check out what I've got at weldmongerstore.com, and once again, I appreciate you watching, and good luck with all your welding.